Hi, I'm Noise Pixel from um, Marshmallow Respawn, and today I'm going to show you how I end up making the Universal Spawn system that I showed in a previous video. If you want to check out what I did do in that previous video, uh, click on this link right here, if I remember to post it. <laughs> and uh, so let's get started. Um, I'm going to show you. So, of course, you know, it's a spawn system, so it spawns objects, right? So, let's get into the blueprint this time to show what's under the hood. So, uh, first, uh, I'm basically using this um, a collision radius to um, check if the player's inside. And so, what I set the player, uh, what I set the collision radius to uh, check for is basically the player. And uh, let me go over here. And so, it's level type. I basically made it uh, just a level type that way, so nothing else interferes with it. So, I only want. Um, so, if I have like. Collision challenge for like enemies or magic, nothing uh, gets uh, affected by this, so it's just on its own kind of challenge. And generally, things like th like this is going to be on this challenge for my game specifically. Uh, of course, no physics collision that way, so you don't know, run to a wall. That, that'd be weird. And I had it set to the strap, ignore everything except for the player. And right here, I have a new collision challenge. Which you want to know how to do a collision challenge if you're new to the Unreal Engine. You would go into the project settings and then, um, yeah, where is that? Collision, 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 collision. And click on collision right here. And then, um, and you see right here level and block, then player, those two collision objects I made. You would basically go to new object collision, type in whatever you want to type in, and set the default response to it. And that will just, uh, give you that new channel inside of, um, all the collision channel area. So don't, like, flood it up. It'll be weird. Most times you just, comes with the basic ones so I have it like that right and so basically set your player so that blue guy you saw he is a his collision object type is a player and this one's a level type so um, you would have it set up like that and then you would basically use a gates function to always check for the uh, collision and I have it on overlap open and close uh, close and open I had this to where as soon as you step outside of race it deactivates which I may or may not have needed to do that, but uh, hey, I did it anyway, so that's fine. No, yes, I did need to do it. Could constantly need to fire off, not just one shot. And so I go into the gate if you're inside a collision radius. Now I have two variables in here. Uh, if I can open it here, there we go. Uh, spawn count, spawn limit. So basically, um, this is just for. Uh, if you do have this enabled, it will basically increment that later on down the line. I'll show you just way over here. It will basically increment that value. So as soon as it hits that limit, then it'll stop spawning in this false statement. But if you don't have to enable uh, the use max spawn variable, I basically have it set to spawn frequency right here, just a random floating range. You can set the parameters for that. So that's this uh, setting right here that you saw in the previous video. There's adjusting the uh, range for that. Yeah, um, of course that affects the delay. And then let's see here, trace distance, change value for, for the trace change value of Z, change of four down trace. Oh, yeah, all right. <laughs> see, it's been a while since I've actually looked at this. But, um, so, now this is actually where the stuff gets a little more detailed, uh, showing where the spawn location is. And for, uh, I explained in the previous video that, um, Sometimes it ends up spawning to the floor, so I had to uh, set up a system to fix that. So I'll get to that layer guy. That's like two different parts, actually. <laughs> so first, for the spawn location of the actual character, I think. Um, of course, you'll get the player controller and the forward vector and the actual location. And then, of course, you just like... I don't know why I broke that. I didn't need to break that. That's fine. Anyway. So I break that off, and then I basically put into this add... Um, uh, nose right there, but then I also took the character's forward vector and the thing is back on. Um, I took the character's forward vector and then I plugged that into the random unit vector cone. And basically, what that would do is that this the the random unit vector cone basically had to only spawn a cone. And if you saw in my previous video, you saw how it only spawned in that small cone in front of me. This is basically the variable that controls that. And so, you know, you take that pipe into this break vector, zero out the Z value, because you don't really need like a 3D cone, you only need like a 2D cone, X and Y value. Um, or you could do a Z value if you had like a different type of game, for, but for my game, I didn't need it. 
And so, um, minimum spawn distance, maximum spawn distance, uh, basically is another range that will show, uh, basically it will show, you know, how far the object will spawn, and of course that's a range too, because I really made the system for an open world type of game, so therefore, you know, enemies always spawn specifically 20 meters in front of you, you know, because eventually the players start noticing a pattern. Um, so I take both of those, a vector from up here, and then the random floating range from there, and now we'll, um, pipe into this, uh, add vector, uh, no, I keep calling it a function, I guess it's kind of a function. And then from there, I'll add the trace height, um, and so the trace, I have to just show you the trace height. I'm gonna set the debug on here. So the trace height is that little check for the ground, so it starts really high in the air, based off this function. See this this all this calculation up here will show like the actual location of that, but this will do the height because when I um, remove the z value, I basically substituted here um, for um, the determine the z value for that trace height. Because this isn't the actual spawn spot necessarily; it's just for the trace. And so pipe that all into here, uh, subtract it from the trace distance, so you can get that into the end point. That way, so it'll go downward, and then. I'll show you what that does actually. So you hop in here. I didn't compile that compile. Yeah. So ray traces. Uh, oops. If you see these ray traces right here, these are actually what's checking for the ground. If it does manage to hit the ground, then it'll spawn an object. But then, see if it were to say if you're on like a really steep mountain and somehow the trace were to be under, were to be under the um, uh, the map, it wouldn't spawn in me. Cause otherwise, the enemy would just fall to the floor. So. That's just a safeguard there, and um, so you take that, got that, then turn duration off. And of course, see, it's that check. You have to actually hit something for that to return true. You have to do something, and of course, break the hit result from that of uh, what you got, and basically just pipe in a location plus a spawn location adjustment. Which the spawn location adjustment, I'll show you that again. I guess it's a little more detailed. Um, it's just like a small little tweak. You can see how these are floating. For other things, they may not be floating, or they may be, because they may be spawning through the ground due to it being like a large object. So that fine tune adjustment is just there for if you're like spawning like larger monsters, and they, you know they're going to fall through the floor, they're going to be stuck halfway through the floor. That will like spawn them slightly above the ground so they don't clip. So there's just another variable I add there to, um, to the location, and then uh, it just. I'm still reading some of this stuff. Oh. And this right here just says what to spawn right here. You know, just have a switch on the node right there and, and a random uh, enter to pick what it uh, picks out. And of course, spawn at that location would be piped into all these transforms. And uh, for right here, I have just, uh, I have only just actors spawn here, but this works just the same for AI. The nav mesh works and everything. So you can spawn your AI actors in this spot too. Just add a new. Uh, no, I mean, new pen, and then just put into the list, and uh, so it'll spawn these at random. And of course, you could set a uh, way to make sure some things occur more than other times, but that's like you know, a little more in depth. I'm not gonna get into that in this video. Uh, and of course, once it spawns an actor, it will ask, Are you using a max spawn variable that I referred to earlier? If you are using a max spawn variable, um, set the max spawn count to uh, spawn count plus one. And then, if it reaches the maximum spawn limit, then it will actually uh, stop you from uh, spawning anymore. And of course, I didn't add a reset feature, which you can always do that. Like maybe uh, if you walk out of the collision radius and you walk back in the collision radius, reset it or something like that. But for my game, I didn't need that, so yeah, I chose not to do that. Uh, yeah. So. Um, yeah, so this is my universal spawn system. Um, I might do like here. I'll do a little sweep of it, so you can uh, maybe pause the video if you want to take a good look at it and how everything's connected. Just flowing on through. Yeah. So anyway, uh, I'm Noise Pixel from uh, Marshmallow Respawn. Please remember to rate, comment, favorite, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching.